Hi, this is Brandon Finnegan, Director of Elections here at Decision Desk HQ. We're coming towards the end of a pretty exciting primary season, and there's still a good number of exciting races to come. This week, two small states are up population-wise, but with big names on the ballot in Alaska and Wyoming. We also have some elections Saturday weekend, just before Tuesday, in the great state of Hawaii. Now before we dive in, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to click that little bell so you're notified as soon as they're released and give them a like. Let's go on and get on to the races. First up, Wyoming. Now polls close about 9 p.m. Eastern time here, and we don't normally spend a lot of time on Wyoming races in most midterms, but this isn't any typical midterm. The at-large GOP primary is obviously making national news. Congresswoman Liz Cheney has been at the forefront of the January 6th committee and was also one of former President Donald Trump's most vocal critics on the right before that. She is enjoying a lot of backing from never Trump Republicans like her father, former Vice President Dick Cheney, and former President George W. Bush. Now, Harriet Hageman, a former member of the RNC, is Cheney's biggest challenger. Has the backing of former President Donald Trump and hails from Fort Laramie in Goshen County in the eastern part of the state. Now, Wyoming, and this is going to be an understatement, is a very Republican state. Trump won it by 70% in 2020. Biden did win two counties, Albany and Teton, and Cheney is from Teton County. It will likely be her best county in the primary election, but it's not very large population-wise, even by Wyoming standards. Counties to really watch are Laramie, which is home to Cheyenne, and Natrona, which includes Casper. These are the largest counties in the state. They're also going to be home to the largest number of Republicans in the state. And odds are, whoever wins both those counties, they're going to mop up the rest of them, and they're going to end up winning this primary election. And going into the election, polling-wise indicates that Liz Cheney's in serious trouble. She trails her opponent by double digits, substantial double digits, and we will have a live vote count from the counties coming into our feed on Tuesday. It'll be exciting to see what happens there. That is the biggest race of the night in Wyoming. Now, there are no restrictions on absentee voting, but given how red the state is, we don't really expect there to be that much in terms of absentee voting. Um, we do expect to have pretty much all the vote counted on election night. Moving west, way west, to the great state of Alaska, the land of the midnight sun. And hey, it's appropriate, right? Because we have midnight Eastern poll closing time in Alaska. The biggest race of the night isn't a primary, but a special election there for their at-large seat. There are only three candidates running, even though the state has a top four qualification. Democrat Al Gross dropped out after the initial round. Uh, so we just have former Governor Sarah Palin, Nick Bedgick III, and Democrat Mary Sattler Patola. Now, based on the nature of the state, political leaning of the state, and some of the polling we've seen, we're very, very likely to see a victory for eventually for either Bedgick or Palin. And for a distant third, potential would be Patola. We won't likely be able to make a call in this contest. In addition to that unique top four primary system in the state now, Alaska uses ranked choice voting. Unless one of these candidates clears 50% right out the gate, we're gonna be waiting a while. And we're gonna be waiting a while anyway for Alaska because Alaska counts votes that are up to, that arrive up to 10 days after election day, so long as they were postmarked by election day. And in case you think that's odd, I remind you, Alaska is huge. It's an incredibly rural state that spans way past up north the Arctic Circle, all the way out to the Aleutian Islands and all the way down the Juneau. It's gonna take some time for some of those mail-in ballots to arrive. And if that's not enough, Alaska doesn't even break out votes by county or, well, in their neck of the woods, boroughs. They simply release a statewide tally when they're initially reporting their returns. There are other contested races for governor, senate, and the full house term. With the top four system, there shouldn't be too many surprises as the big names will almost certainly advance. One race to watch will be the senate primary. We want to see how current incumbent Republican Lisa Murkowski does against former President Donald Trump's pick, Kelly Shabaka. The general election in November will also be determined by ranked choice voting if that turns out to be necessary. Now, 
those are the elections that are coming up on Tuesday. We do have an election in the state of Hawaii this weekend. Held its primaries on Saturday, or already did, depending on what time you're watching this video after it's posted on YouTube. Polls close at 1 a.m. Eastern Time, and because it's pretty much an all-mail-in state since 2019, we should have the vast majority of returns reported in probably about the first two hours. The most notable race in Hawaii is going to be the Democratic contest for governor, but current Lieutenant Governor Josh Green seems to have a commanding lead, if the polling is to be believed. Now that's going to do it for us this week. Be sure to like, subscribe, and sign up for more notifications. We'll be back next week with our previews of the elections in the Empire State and contests in the Sunshine State. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm Brandon Finnegan.